Hey everybody, it's Jason Blaha here, and once again it is time for a max effort lower day, but a quick reminder for those of you who watch these videos, please remember to click like down below, be greatly appreciated. And squats went pretty good. Uh, I already had a guy ask, do you get to use chains in your competition? Guys, I've done countless videos on why we do different variations and why we use chains and stuff for in our max effort rotation. Uh, this is not new information. It's not bizarre. It's not something hundreds of world record holders haven't done in powerlifting and other strength sports. Okay. So I went with just trying to stick around 90%. So I only did 442. Tried to get good depth and it really looked like an opener. 442 plus the 48 chains. Uh, and I almost said, oh, I need to make another 20 pound jump. And I'm like, why? I'll just go heavier next time. World is not till October. I have like three and a half months of training maxes left. I'm not worried. As long as we're getting heavy enough to get benefit of a training max, it's fine. No need to strain and grind on these. Just keep bringing the numbers up. Keep getting stronger on the accessory work. Get my conditioning up, work capacity up, recomp. That means gain muscle, lose fat. And I'm not going to get into the details of why most of you can't do that. Because you probably can't. Be realistic here. Uh, same thing on the deadlift. Went with the stiff bar. When I'm doing deficit pulls, I use the stiff bar. I use the Texas Power Bar, not the deadlift bar. I uh, got an easy 545, held it, lowered it under control, right? Uh, again, at least 90% off a one inch deficit. So that's what we wanted to do. Just good solid training maxes, and I'll bring those up with the different ones as we get closer to worlds. I'm not going to burn myself out because I'm not doing deloads. Okay, I'm not doing deloads now. Certain things in my life have changed to where I don't deload anymore. And so therefore, I need to always be recovered. More sleep, more food, more carbs. So what I did next, uh, like I said last time, I think at this point, I'm just going to do tons of inverted rows with the axle bar get my grip on point you know I was mainly doing when I first broke like that 615 and held it easily before a couple years ago what were we doing tons of pen lay rows with the axle bar it was really my main back work I can do this as my main row it's fine keep building the forearms and the grip and then I do pull-ups on, on a lot of my days question I ask is for now for a phase if I'm doing tons of those and I'm doing pull-ups do I need any more latin mid trap work or anything I don't think so Plus the grip training from all of it's great. Keeping in mind I'm doing upright rows and other stuff for my upper back, you know, and shoulders and everything. So it's not like only the rowing and the pull-ups are the only thing hitting the traps and the rear delts. Plus we have all those speed pulls. So I just kind of supersetted these back and forth because they're working different muscles. I wanna I wanna work on again the next stuff. My next strength is right at back where it was. I, I didn't do these for a few months whatever, a couple months, three months, who knows. I'm right back to where I was. I'm now doing sets of 10 with the 55 pound plate, two workouts in. Um, you know, we'll see if we can get a little stronger, get more reps. But again, it helps deadlift lock out, All right? I found it helps with headaches and sleeping and everything, actually, to do the neck work. A lot of people are like, Jason, you're training like you train your grapplers and fighters. All this speed work with bands, yeah. Axle bar work, neck work, yeah. But you know what? Athlete's an athlete. It's like I was I was working with a guy who today, who's hired me before. He is actually a really, really successful bodybuilding coach. He and his fiance, his fiance dropped a ball on him. Said, look, I'm coaching. I want Jason to coach you again for a little while. Wedding's coming up. You've plateaued. You're not motivated. And uh, I did a, did a Skype with him this morning for 90 minutes. You know, we laughed about that. At the end of the day, an athlete's an athlete. Athlete's an athlete. He's gone over to where he just wants to do women's gin pop stuff because he makes more money and it's less, it's not as annoying as all his bikini girls. But, you know, he was watched my channel for years too. And uh, he's bigger and more jacked than me, funny enough, in my age bracket. But not on the lower body, on the upper body he is. Uh, you know, so I'm going to coach him a little while. We laughed about that. Athlete's an athlete at the end of the day. Do I need to train my golfers? And we joked about that. Like, I've got a guy who wants to have the best drive out of the tee box at the country club and just be able to outbench the other guys and everything there at the country club, who I've coached for years. 
And we joked about that, and it's like, I train him the same way. Bands, chains, specialty bars. He's got a reverse hyper at home. But he laughed and said, what's that worth, though, from a business perspective? Because, you know, the guy, the guy owns a real estate company out in California. What's that worth from a business perspective, though, to be able to have that drive out of the tee box to country club, be a great golfer, and be stronger than the other guys if they work out there? What's that worth in terms of, of business and being the alpha? We laughed about that. Like, it's probably worth a lot. It's worth 250 a month to him and buying a home gym. I train him the same way, athletes and athletes. Got a guy doing conjugate now. He's going to do his first bodybuilding show coming up. He's power lifter. Done a couple meets. Going to do another meet three months after his show. And uh, funny enough, someone very close to me is now coaching his girlfriend. I won't get into that. But <laughs> yeah, he's doing conjugate. At the end of the day, getting big, strong, and powerful is getting big, strong, and powerful. It doesn't matter what you compete in. And Louis Simmons always said that. Do you need to train his sprinters and his fighters that much different than a power lifter? Do we really? Do I even need to train a gym pop person who wants to get big and strong and fit? Really? We can't use this sort of training system and have them do GPP? I think we can. They just maybe won't do as much work. What do we do after this? Went over to the belt squats, went up five pounds, managed to get an extra rep on the last set. I'm gonna have to grind these up slow because when I went up to the 220 in plate weight, these five sets of 10 got hard. Now I added another five and they didn't feel quite so bad today. Maybe maybe because of no speed work first. But I'm going to have to bring these up. But you know what? I think at this point, I'm going to see, because now these are getting difficult, in terms of hypertrophy, it builds all the primary movers of the squat. I think I just need to get my lower back and stuff stronger, which I'm doing on the reverse hypers. I think that's part of my chest cave problem I had after I refed incorrectly. You know what? I think this will fix it. But I think I'm going to see direct carryover. I think everything I add to that belt squat for the sets of 10 now will have direct carryover to my max squat. All right, reverse hypers. These felt too easy. I went up to 10 pounds. I did two sets. I'm like, this isn't enough weight now. This doesn't feel like the 340 felt last, last week. The 350 didn't. So I bumped it up. Another 15 on for two sets. 365. I'm like, still isn't heavy enough. Even doing it strict, so I went up to 400. Changed plates around, went to 400. Then my last six sets. Was it six sets? Was it seven sets? No, this, is, this isn't, this is the 365. So we did two sets of that. Then I went up to the 400, then it got challenging. I started feeling my back get super pumped. Super pumped back on the first set. And I'm like, okay, there we go. But I got the reps. Right, the goal was to get to 500 on this, and I'm like, it's going to take me close to, well, I don't think so. We were doing just 320 a couple of weeks ago. Went up to 400 now. And I managed to get like 13 reps on the last set. So push it out a little further. So I think what we're going to do, I think what we're going to do, maybe next workout, we'll just try to get all 10 sets with this weight, and then we'll go back to adding weight. All right. This gave me an intense, intense low back pump. All right, I felt it. Now I'm really getting what I want. This is gonna build my erectors, my glutes. I think it's gonna carry over the deadlift. That deficit deadlift is real easy today. All right, I think this is gonna carry over. It's like I said already, this will get my deadlift back up to where I want it. Right. When I've been strongest on the reverse hyper, my deadlift has always been strongest. When I'm really good at axle bar stuff from grip and I'm strong on the reverse hyper, that's always when I'm pulling over 600. We know that. So I'm going to push this reverse hyper hard. We're going to keep doing the crazy volumes I'm doing on it. We're going to push progressive overload. 
I'm going to get this up to where I do 10 sets of 10 for 500. All right, my glutes and erectors should be ridiculously strong then. Okay, this is going to give me the deadlift carryover. That and all the fat bar work. Part of me is tempted to take my pull-up bar and flip it back over and do fat bar on that too. I mean, really, look at my lats. You guys see my lats in those videos, the pull-up videos. Everyone freaks out. They're like, your lats are insane. That's what I get in real life, too. You know what? I think they're going to be just fine. I could do all fat bar work. But I need that grip and form, so I'm doing all those hammer curls. Okay. Get those forearms and a grip thick. Build the erectors, build the glutes. We will hit some big deadlifts by the end of the year, I think. That's the plan. All right, guys, but well, that's really all I have to say on that today. I hope it's been informative, and I'll talk to you guys next time.